testing now. So, <laughs> please join your seats. Seems like a very interesting discussion. <laughs> okay, great. So, my name is Martin Perez. Today, I'll talk about the state of the Xog Foundation. I'm, um, I've been elected as one of the directors this year, and uh, I'll try to uh, introduce you to what the foundation is about and, um, and what we are changing right now in the foundation. So, <clears throat> I'll just use this because this is perfect. The Xorg Foundation is a non-profit corporation chartered to develop and execute effective strategies that provide worldwide stewardship and encouragement of the X-Window system and related projects, which are MISA, DRI, Wayland. So, just to be clear, it's not only about X. It's broader than that. So that's why I put the logos, of course, X, XCB, X, so Linux because we have no logos for DRI. Uh, MISA is GLX Gears and Wayland as a logo, wow. <laughs> okay, so the foundation is not about uh, providing technical guidance of any sort, neither uh, for um, creating roadmaps or deadlines, releases, and well, no supervision at, uh, supervision at all. What it does is uh, providing a communication uh, architecture or tools in relation with uh, free desktop. Uh, it also provides an annual physical meeting, the XDC, X Developer Conference. We'll talk about that in the next slide. And provide money to help the, de uh, the development of the graphics stack. So the XDC or XDS, I think now we are through the, uh, the XDS, we'll only use XDC, but it used to be XDC for the, the um, US version of the uh, XDS, and XDS will be in, Euro in Europe. So we have this alternating, uh, alternating um, uh, yeah, so one year it's in the US, one year in, the, in Europe, so as we, we have a load balancing. <laughs> Um, it's organized once a year, usually in September or October, and it lasts for three days. So for this conference, or maybe for FOSDEM, uh, members, uh, XORG members, can uh, require tra travel sponsorship. Of course, they need to present something for that, uh, but this is something that the board can uh, provide. So. As, a fun, um, as we have a corporate um, entity, we can be part of the um, uh, Google Summer of Code. So we've been, we are an approved uh, organization, and this allows students to be paid by Google for doing work on the graphics stack during summer. And so to flip bits instead of burgers. <laughs> they are more productive this way. Um, so, uh, some examples of this year's project. We've had uh, David Herman. I don't know, is he here? Not yet. He'll be coming soon. Um, mentored by Dave Early, and he wrote, uh, I mean, he wrote the implementation for render nodes and uh, some security fixes. So, it's uh, very good and very interesting. Uh, render nodes will be uh, providing GPGPU without X or Oh, okay, it's too long to explain that. So, my student uh, was Samuel Pitoise. Uh, he's been reverse engineering uh, performance counters on NVIDIA cards. So, as we can um, tell developers, application developers, what is wrong with the application and why they are hitting a bottleneck, this kind of stuff. So, it's a lot of work. Um, but we've got some uh, counters working in, uh, in MISA. So, I'll make a demo of that tomorrow if you come to the Nouveau presentation. And then Dylan Noblesmith, um, mentored by Ian, right here, <laughs> who worked on implementing GL uh, X direct state access. Uh, so far, the code has not um, hit Basta. Because I'm an awful mentor. <laughs> OK, because he not, he's an awful uh, mentor. That's what he said for the video, guys. OK, so yeah. But we also have our own program that, that is kind of, like, uh, kind of like the GSOC. It's called the EVOC, Endless Vocation of Code. So basically, um, it's not over summer. It could be any time of, uh, of the year. But you have to be a student. And um, 
and you have to be on vacation at this time. Right. So uh, we had no project in 2013 because we had GSOC. And in 2012, we didn't get accepted for GSOC, so we had many students applying. So we had uh, Francisco Jerez, who worked on implementing uh, CL support. Um, yeah, for new role, but this code didn't uh, make it uh, upstream. Uh, some code did make it upstream for Gallium. Uh, then we had Supreet working on uh, new role stuff uh, that I mentored. Uh, Blatt, I don't know how to pronounce that, worked with Tom Stellar on uh, creating a framework for testing OpenCL. So basically adding uh, OpenCL tests to Piglet, if you know what this is, otherwise it's a testing architecture. We have more, but no place on the slide. Um, we also provide communication, as said before. So um, we have a Google Plus YouTube account where we use to store and link to talks, uh, slides, or blog articles. I'm the maintainer of that. So if you want me to put something uh, on it, just send me a mail or whatever. Find a way to come contact me. And for Twitter, it's mostly used for security, fi um, not fixes, uh, issues and random updates, and uh, that's work done by Alan Coppersmith. We also have um, Xorg Developer Guide. Yes, now that Xorg is not really developed anymore, I mean, the X part, we have a guide now. <laughs> <laughs> so yeah, it took a while to, uh, to edit it. Uh, it has been mostly written by Alan and uh, Matt Du. And um, well, we worked uh, on it, uh, a, lot, a lot of us, but they did all the heavy lifting. It was edited by Bart Massey from um, uh, PSU, Portland State University. And uh, yeah, so you can access the, week, the, the guide um, in a wiki form, which is nice, so as we can update it in case <laughs> we need to. So. Now let's talk about the current uh, situation with membership and members of the board and all that. So what is a member? <coughs> so it's people actively engaged in the, the community, uh, in the XORG community, so XORG uh, the, the whole umbrella, not just X and X server. And it's someone who's uh, supporting the goal of the foundation. And uh, of course, they need to sign the membership agreement. So as a member, if you become one, and I suggest you do, uh, you can elect the members of the board of directors, and you will be uh, consulted uh, when the board is trying to make big changes to the, uh, the foundation. So for instance, changing the bylaws, uh, changing the corporate sta status, uh, dissolution of the, the foundation or unusual agreement that we would make. This year we'll have bylaw changes and corporate status changes, so please apply. There are currently 79 members and if you want to become one, just, uh, well, you have the URL, so please do. Okay, the uh, so the board of directors is composed of uh, eight members. Every year we re-elect re uh, four new people. So in 2012 we had uh, elected Alex Deutscher, Keith Packard, Matt Du and Matthias Opf. So Alex Deutscher is uh, working for AMD, Keith is working for Intel, Matt is not working on something that is so related. Matthias is uh, a professor in Germany. And this year, uh, I mean, well, last year, but... So Alan Coopersmith is working for Oracle, uh, has been elected. So Peter, uh, working for Red Hat, uh, is now the secretary of the board. Stuart is the treasurer, and I think he works for Oracle too. Mm, should be good. And I'm Martin Perez, I'm a PhD student in, uh, in Bordeaux. So... <coughs> The schedule for the re-election is this one. Uh, so the nomination period opened at, uh, well, last month, 13th of, uh, of uh, January. So basically it means that if you want to become a board member, you apply your, you just apply, 
and uh, you have to follow some rules that are explained in the, the link below. The nomination period uh, ends after a month, so um, then we'll make it public. So the reason why it's not public before is because we want to allow um, uh, candidates to retract without it being public. It's not to hide anything. Um, so if you want to uh, be elect uh, if you want to participate in the election, you need to apply before the 18th of uh, February. So please do that now. The election opens uh, on the 17th, so you have a day of overlap, and it closes, uh, well, three weeks later. <laughs> so, please apply as a candidate if you are uh, a known member of the Zohar Foundation. And, uh, yeah. So, so far, no questions. It's going to be a short talk, sorry. Okay, good. So, corporate status, yeah. <clears throat> Okay, uh, so the foundation has the US IRS 501c3 status. So what does it mean? It's the US um, not-for-profit organization. So it means that if we get donations, uh, the donors don't um, have taxes, don't pay taxes for that. It means that we don't pay taxes too. Yeah. And, uh, well, it's mostly irrelevant for non-USA donors. So most of us here. So, um, getting this status has been quite hard, so it was decided to get it in 2005. Uh, we got it in 2012 and retroactively got it uh, to uh, uh, 2009. Yeah? Uh, so we gained this status thanks to the, the work of the Software Freedom Law Center. Well, we worked with them, but they did a lot of work. We lost this status for a few weeks in 2013 because we didn't uh, publish that we had income. We thought the SFLC would have done the paperwork, but they didn't, so we had a mishap in communication. Fortunately, uh, SFLC managed to get it back. So if you want to have um, the full history of what happened, uh, you can uh, look at our uh, secretary's blog post on that. So the bank situation is, uh, well, we have a lot of money and we can work uh, at the current rate, we can uh, last for uh, four to five years without requiring an, uh, a fundraise. <coughs> We've been uh, living on, um, on our funds for maybe 10 years. Uh, I mean, I'm a new member, so I, yeah, I've always known the foundation as having money and not... Uh, requiring fundraisers. So, we had a mess up with HSBC. They basically changed the rules and uh, shut down our account. Mm, unfortunate. We still have the money, but yeah. So, um, that plus the fact that they used to uh, force us to pay a $30 fee every month for basically doing nothing. And the fact that um, well, the website wasn't that good for money transfers and all that. So we just moved to the Bank of America. Um, it was, yeah, it's easier now, apparently. I'm not the treasurer. It yeah, it should be cheaper too. <laughs> it should be cheaper. But, yeah. I don't know. So, because we are not accountants and we apparently suck at that, we thought that this status is not something that we need anymore. At the time, in 2005, it was needed because we used to get a lot of income. Uh, we don't need that income anymore. So, um, yeah, it's a lot of work. So, it's a, a very good technical achievement, apparently. I wasn't there, but they've been struggling to get it for seven years, so I guess it's quite an achievement. Um, yeah, but it's not, it has not prov uh, proven itself. So, as, as I said, we are not US accountants. I said US because, well, we come from all around, uh, around the world. Um, 
And as we don't get as much money as we used to, it's not worth paying for an accountant. And in the end, it's just easier to uh, move to an umbrella corporation such as SFLC or SPI. Uh, we'll talk about SPI in a, in a bit. Um, so as they manage the, ma the money for us, and they fill all the paperwork for us. So it's good. So we voted at XDC for S SPI. Uh, the reasons why should be public. Um, mostly because it's cheaper. And uh, we'll be contacting the SFLC and, uh, and SPI. And then, when everything is ready for the, the transfer, then we'll require a vote from the, the members. As I said before, members should vote when we change the corporate status, which we are going to do. So SPI, what is it? Uh, so it's a donation infrastructure, basically. So they manage all the money, the bank account, and uh, the taxes, and uh, all the paperwork. Uh, they can collect money from any individuals. We didn't do that before. We usually uh, hand over the hat to companies. It was easier. And in return, they get to keep 5% of all the donations. SPI is also handling Arch Linux, Debian, Free Desktop, LibreOffice, and Drupal, and a few others. I can't remember, but quite a big list. So if it's good for them, it must be good for us, right? <laughs> Then, as we need to, uh, as we want to move to SPI, we need to change the bylaws. So, because the bylaws have been written in uh, Open Office uh, in 2006, versions are quite difficult to see the differences and all that. So I ported that to LaTeX and uh, Git. So as uh, now we can put tags and see the commits change. So it's good. Um, and as we are going to change the bylaws, and changing the bylaws require votes uh, from the members, it's also time that we say that uh, the Xorg Foundation is not only about X. It's good to uh, talk about GRI, Wayland, MISA, these kind of projects. So we would put that into the, um, the bylaws. So if you want to see the, the version, the the current version, uh, version of the bylaws. I think there are two branches. The master one is the current state, no, modifi no modification. It's just porting the open office document to ATEC. And there is an SPI branch that is just about SPI and no changes for the, um, the um, changing the, uh, whoop. The, uh, the changes for changing the scope of the, um, the foundation. But on the wiki, for all, all intent and purposes, the uh, XORG Foundation is about every project. Uh, yeah, Wayland, X, and everything under. OK. So as a conclusion, you should become a member now. We need your opinion very soon. Uh, please also become a board candidate. Uh, board. Um, yeah, so you have about 15 days left for applying. Get involved and improve the communication. This is something we suck at, and we should keep on working on it. <laughs> and uh, keep on cutting and improving the graphic stack. That's what we do best. Any questions? I have. Um, camera, <laughs> it's um, so you, XORG Foundation basically spent seven years getting this 501c3 status and then dropped it a bit, and then now decided that don't need it anymore at all. Yes. Why is it still there? Why is XORG still there? Why is this is also why the, it's now a graphics dev room and not the XORG dev room? So you why, mean the name? Why, no. Why is the XORG Foundation still valid? All it did was create this this new status, and that was it. They just exist to have elections once a year. Well. As, uh, as I said, it's easier to get um, to be in the, in the GSOC program if we are a real organization. We could have went for SPI at the time, I agree. And uh, so the reason that had been said to me, because I wasn't, I wasn't there, of yeah, course. Yeah, sure, it's, it's to the board in general, not only. To yeah. Uh, so the reasons were that we used to get 100K 
uh, a year. So of course Intel, if they could not pay taxes on that, Intel and other companies are, yeah, I don't know who was giving us money, uh, of course they would be more uh, willing to uh, put the money or maybe just put a little more. So at the time it made sense. That's what I've been said. Mm -hmm. And now uh, we've been living off what we had uh, for quite a while. And uh, yeah, I mean, obviously we don't need that status now. Uh, so so uh, yeah. one last thing, as a corporate uh, thing, it's also easier to organize the XTC. Mm. Right, so that's just, yeah, reinstating yourself there. I mean, yeah, at, at this point it might be better to have it be the the open source graphics confederacy or something, no, but, name, name but I mean, you, you want to, you, you want to have some kind of a, of a thing, right, and you want to have some kind of a thing to, for organizing events, for participating in things like, like GSOC, it's probably not as important as it was, um, But I mean, you you still want to have some some kind of of an organization that can that people can point at, but but having it be eccentric and and maybe have it, 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 well well it 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 is, but it it's it still misleading. has has the vestiges of how how X was organized, right? I mean, it's it it has history too, and and and. And and maybe <laughs> what, I thought, oh I was to say I, 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 I thought history's flight got cancelled but <laughs> yeah um, well so then he should answer this <laughs> um, but I mean you you still want to have you still want to have something yeah but all, all I see in movies is is have a maybe have a meeting get get the mic otherwise no one will hear. I don't. I'm, I'm really happy that they changed three, three or four years ago, and finally you started doing things <coughs> in the open. Before that, everything was completely closed. The meetings were just some people on the phone, and that was it. So now everybody can at least see that. That's already a good change. And yeah, uh, apart from that, what are these meetings about usually? What, what's the what's the status with the 501c3? What when are the elections starting? And then a bit of GSOC. And XDC in the VOC, yeah. I mean, I, I put everything in the presentation yeah, yeah, yeah. about what we do. Well done, <laughs> you put everything, yeah. <laughs> so, yeah. Uh, but I, I, I think the board should be more vocal, and you're, you're doing that, that's good. But it, everybody should be more vocal about covering all the projects with, with the old name, because it's a nice URL to keep. Yeah, I was interesting in changing the, uh, interested in changing the name, but it's not something apparently we can do. And some people lo love having a one letter. <laughs> <laughs> it is a nice short URL. DNS name. But I, I had similar um, concerns to Luke for a long time. I've been like, what does the board do? All I hear is all I hear is stories about how they can't pay their obligations, right? So like, one of the functions of the board is to um, help pay for XDC and get people there, right? So sponsor travel and some people will will get travel sponsorship. They'll come, and then the foundation fails to pay them for like a year. You know, well, which is yeah, or yeah, they don't get the money to the Australia venue. Australia. Or th that happened in Australia too, which seems like oh. just an absolute failure on the board's part, which is really frustrating. But on the other hand, we, I think we do need an organization to receive yeah. that funding and and manage it properly, ideally. Um, so I, I think there is a role for the board there, but um, obviously. Yeah, I agree. We've been there. There were some issues, and that was before your time. Actually. Yeah, but um, uh, yeah. So maybe that's why. As I said, we are not accountants, and we usually don't like it. Uh, so judging with the SPI. Maybe yeah, sense. moving to SPI would maybe make it easier. And usually we just send money every year, so we forget how we did. And sending money uh, is uh, quite difficult because you have. Um, all the the bank fees and all that it's changing all the time it doesn't yeah uh, yeah for the reimbursement I got like for XDC it, uh, I had a difference of about 130 euros or something something like that just in bank fees what yeah so maybe working with SPI will be just nicer and uh, 
Mm-hmm. So is the question done? No, go ahead. Yeah, go ahead. Um, will the will the move to uh, SPI change anything within uh, the foundation? Like well, processes or uh, projects or something? Project, no. As I said, we don't provide technical guidance. We are just here to help when people need us, when developers need us. That's what we try to do. Um, so it shouldn't change anything in the project management, um, but it will change the way we work as the board and uh, as the foundation itself. Mm. Does it answer your question or...? Then you rely... No. Um, so... To be true, I didn't uh, do research what uh, SPI is, but no, of course. You're you're mm -hmm. just uh, you are moving into an umbrella organization, and the the only change uh, is going to be the treasurer. That's it. Mm -hmm. the, the the treasurer's work is going to be different. Mm -hmm. So um, if you want to have a look at the differences uh, in the way we work, you can have a look at the SPI branch in the Git repo. This one. Because yeah, I've listed the differences and how we are going to, what is going to change. I didn't put a Seagate uh, link because I couldn't find it in the train and the 3G connection was horrible. So I, I knew this one works. <laughs> uh, look, there was a question there. Okay, great. Okay. I was just curious, um, the fundamental, was there more between, say, the Software Freedom Conservancy specifically and SPI than just the 10% to 5%, or was there some other philosophical difference? I'm, I'm curious what that full, I, I'm, I'm surprised that we have two organizations that do the same thing, and can you tell me what your thinking on it was? Off the top of my head, since September, because we haven't looked at it since yet, uh, since, um, yeah, it really was just a difference in uh, money. Uh, and SPI was a bit, I think SPI was um, managing less. Uh, so it's just about money and, uh, and taxes. That's it. That's all they do. SFLC had more, but I can't remember what it was. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Um, yeah, it works. Okay. <laughs> Two questions, actually. Um, first one, uh, are there any plans to improve the members' website? It's <laughs> really horrible right now. Yes. So yeah, uh, no, we have no plans. So, please, make this a priority. <laughs> <laughs> it's a horrible yeah. if you're trying to get people into the foundation. And, it's and have you looked at the HTML code? It's all tables. It was good because I could count the numbers by grabbing and counting the word lines. Yeah, that's, <laughs> that's it. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, uh, yeah. I agree. It's horrible. But do we really? Do you really want us to maybe pay someone to change that? Yeah, I would expect the foundation with all that money to at least get their website right. Well, this uh, is something I can submit to the board. <laughs> yeah. Oh yeah, and yeah, as Egbert said, uh, if someone wants to uh, step up and fix it, it's even better. <laughs> we don't need to spend money, but I don't know who likes to do web development here. <laughs> yeah, I'm just repeating what he said. We are hardcore C programmers, not web developers, and I don't I think there is a, a frequent overlap between the two communities. Yeah, <laughs> just pay someone to do it. Um, Second one, uh, I think it's not that much the foundation does, just providing money to the events and travel expenses. Um, I would expect the foundation to actually be more active in something like the OpenGL or, or we have all those great uh, free graphics drivers now, Nuvo, Radeon, whatever, and all those don't have an OpenGL certification because you have to buy those test suits ah. and stuff, and 
I think the foundation could spend some money there to get them those certifications. I think this would make a difference. Yeah. 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 I think new new can do OpenGL 3.3, and we can't really advertise it because it's not paid for the test suit. We have Piglet where all those are covered at least <laughs> a bit, and I think it wouldn't be too much of an effort to get the official. Uh, let there. Can you but get it's a cost problem. The mic to Ian. So yeah, before answering, we'll give the, ma the mic to Ian because he's been well, doing the work for Intel and the certification. So, so he knows um, better. Yeah, I've been I've been doing that that work for Intel, and I'm also one of Intel's representatives to to Kronos. Um, for desktop OpenGL, there is no uh, compulsory conformance process <coughs> for versions previous to. 4.4, I believe. Last um, one. <laughs> there is an optional process for for previous versions, um, and we're in the, we are are currently trying to to get some things fixed up so that we can we can pass all that uh, uh, on our driver. Um, so so there isn't anything. I mean, you can advertise any version of desktop OpenGL that that you want, and not be technically running a array of of the, the Kronos process. Um, the story is quite different for OpenGL ES where there is an established process for all of the versions of, of ES. Um, and actually, I don't know if there's anyone from, from AMD in, in the room. You guys should just get yourself, get, get your stuff fixed up and submit conformance because the company already paid for it for, <laughs> for the other driver. Um, <laughs> There is supposedly a process by which um, basically nonprofits can submit conformance on on drivers without having to pay the usual fees. Uh, people have told me about that this thing exists in Kronos a couple of times, but I haven't been able to figure out what it actually is. It must so, be meant so for us because. <laughs> so, so what, and so what that. that means is that we may well be able to get soft pipe and LLVM pipe certified as as conformant ES implementations without having to to shell out a bunch of money. Um, part of part of the difficulty is there's a bunch of weird legal agreements. Well, not weird, but a bunch of legal agreements about getting access to the conformance tests. Um, and it's not clear exactly how that would work and who would run the conformance tests in order to, to be able to submit them because the people who do have access are people like me who are really busy and don't want to try and screw around with. Oh, the if, if, if LLV and pipe fails some test, okay, great, now what? <laughs> how do I get, you know, how do I get that to someone who's actually working on that driver so that they can fix it? Uh, I don't know. So. There, there's some other sorting out that, that needs to happen um, before before that can work out. Um, and I don't know how that would apply to hardware drivers. So I don't, I mean, I don't think that we would be able to, to get a free pass on Nuvo or, you know, on any of the, the SOC drivers that people are working on or, or things like that. Can you it's, give us an estimate of the price that we would need uh, to pay? It's on the Kronos website, um, but it's on the order of tens of thousands. I, I want to say it's like 30 grand for ES3, but I don't, I don't remember. I, I, di I didn't sign that check. <laughs> yeah, okay. <laughs> I just had to, to pass it along to people who could sign that check. <laughs> so yeah, do we really need that? With that kind of responsibility. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, so it's, uh, I mean, it's interesting. This is something that I could bring up to the, the board. And um, I mean, maybe you would, as a member, you would vote on that because it's a lot of money. And if you think that it's needed, I don't think new actually needs that because it's mostly for users and users. 
and not companies, so they don't really care as long as it looks good. Um, I don't know. I mean, Okay. Okay, then I'll, yeah, it would be nice if we could just sit down together and write an email to the board because I just may forget. So, not forget to send the mail, but just forget the reasons because, yeah, I don't work on that. So, okay, great. Something else. Um, so, X is in a slight bit of an identity crisis. It's trying, you're, you guys are trying to establish that it's more than just. Sorry, yeah, it is, but sorry, yeah, speaking it. Um, so you're trying to establish that you're more than just X, that you're Mesa, that you're also Wayland, everything to do with graphics and input and stuff. Um, one of the ways that you can make yourself visually, very visibly as well, um, very important all of a sudden is by doing infrastructure, by taking over a free desktop.org, for instance, and paying for the infrastructure. Getting this properly admin, no longer user directories which suddenly disappear or an, uh, a repo that gets hacked or something. That would be something that Xorg has the money for, the budget for. They could do that and they could give us good hardware that we can depend on. This is something we need to discuss indeed. But yeah, we, have, we haven't had the time to do that. Because yeah, free desktop is not, does not have a board, no election. And yeah, so. Yeah, no accountability in any way. And that's the one thing XORC had. The organization is there and it's slightly accountable once a year. Yeah. <laughs> Not that it matters yeah. much, but right. I mean, yes. Oh, I don't get elected. Oh. We don't get much powers to do that. <laughs> oh, you can get your more powers now. There's mm. Kronos, there is yeah, the I mean, Yeah, it's important. Mm -mm. Yeah, this is something good. I think we need to discuss that, the, our relation with free desktop. Right. I love the name. I would love the Xorg Foundation to use this name, but I think I'm the only one. <laughs> yeah, but that's a very personal opinion, not the opinion of the board. Anyone else want to make the fat man run? <laughs> <laughs> You're allowed to. I accept. <laughs> okay, thanks very much, Fanny. Welcome.